there's a, been a running joke dating back, uh, you know, all the way back to you know, pre-World War II, that the population of Austin was perfect when I got here. Uh, so anybody came after me is too much. I've moved to Austin in 1995 and it's really different. Tremendous growth. Um, every time you look around, you're seeing cranes putting up new buildings all around town. I don't know what the heck's gonna happen. I mean, it already kind of seems like it's a little crowded. It's a small city as it is. It takes a lot longer to get places. That really cuts into Margarita time. My great-great-grandkids are not gonna know the real Austin. I moved here in the 60s. And you know, that was back when there were hippies everywhere. I was actually one of those guys. It makes me really sad that people from the future aren't gonna know how wonderful it was and how fabulous Austin was in the 1990s. To me, the real Austin died in about 1870. All I'm saying is this, I used to be able to take my carriage downtown and I used to be able to go in, have a sarsaparilla at the saloon, listen to the piano player, but now I can't even find a parking place for my carriage. The Austin of today is definitely not the Austin of when it was founded. More than 100 people are moving here every day. So when you have that much change happening that rapidly, you also have that much history being created. And we need to save that history. The Austin History Center is kind of a hidden gem. Everybody has driven down Guadalupe past this architecturally significant building but not really known what it was. The Austin History Center is the local history division of the Austin Public Library, and we preserve the history of Austin and Travis County. All the materials that are created uh, in going about daily life in Austin, our job is to try to document that experience. Letters, diaries, records, photographs, maps, books, video, audio, oral histories. This building is open to the public and we encourage people to both come and be educated here as well as to do archival research. If you buy a historic property or you have ancestors who may have grown up here and you just want to learn more, you would just come to visit and you would talk to staff who work here and they would pull the relevant materials and bring them to you and you would sit in a reading room and be able to go through them, make copies. They may be a filmmaker, they may be here looking for family records, learning about uh, relatives from the past. We feel that we have a responsibility to provide some interpretation. So we also do exhibits. The next exhibit that we're having up is called Backwards in High Heels, Getting Women Elected, focusing primarily on Austin women. This building was the first public library for the city of Austin. It's a renaissance building with a little deco. It's a building that has a, an identity crisis. It was built in 1933, and it served as the main library until 1979, when they built the John Henry Falk building next door. When the new library was opened, the community had to determine what the use of this building would be. They talked about tearing it down to build a parking garage. Sue McBee, who was a noted philanthropist, gathered together a group of concerned citizens to save this building. They actually formed what was called the Austin Heritage Guild, which has become the Austin History Center Association. The Austin History Center Association is an independent nonprofit organization that was founded in 1980 to be a friends and support group for the Austin History Center. The association is able to do some fundraising and to connect the History Center to the public. History keeps growing. It's not getting smaller, it's getting bigger. When this building first opened as a History Center, we had space to collect materials. We no longer had that space. So now we're gonna go take a look uh, at the archive storage, a place that the public doesn't normally get to see. We have to get very creative with, with how we fit things and constantly shifting things around just trying to make room. In these stacks, this is one range of many ranges of our archival collections, but this is the final range. This is the last row of shelving so we have to put collections uh, and we're coming up to the end uh, and we're at the end. Uh, and as you can see, we have maybe a couple shelves left to uh, continue growing.
we have about 50,000 square feet of materials in this building, and this building is only 33,000 square feet. The big focus right now for the association is to expand over into the building which is next door, which is now the current central library. They're building a new library that's supposed to be uh, ready in 2016. That would uh, provide us with an additional 100,000 square feet of space, uh, which I could almost completely fill right now. And at that time, we hope to move over there and have that kind of as our archival facility, kind of turn this building into a visitor center, kind of the entry into our campus. Austin's going to continue to grow. We can find space to continue to save and document Austin's history and provide opportunities for people to come explore it, or we can stop documenting Austin's history and just basically say Austin stopped in 2014 and nothing happened after that, uh, or we start throwing away the old, older, old stuff and document from here on out. We need to save that history. I've always kind of viewed history as, it's like a tapestry with a lot of little threads, and each of those threads is all little stories. And if you remove those threads, you lose the tapestry. Especially as we grow, especially when these people say, well, I miss Austin when. How are we going to know that if we don't know what Austin was when? We need that to hold the fabric of our community together. A breakfast taco? Ma'am, that is good. <laughs>